And we're back. Hello. I've got a nice little break. <laughs> Very short little break. Yeah. Yes. So I think we're going to keep building on things, mm -hmm. assuming Andy really knew what he was talking about as he's, each slide, you know, has a logical linkage yep. set. So we're going to talk about background agents now. Yeah. So, so we're in a kind of a bit of a application life cycle theme at the moment. Yeah. yeah. There's some kind of life cycle thing happening here. Yeah. But a consistent thing we keep seeing is the silly agenda thing every time, right? All right. So as you can see in red, we are on background agents, as we just said. And we only have a few more left to go. Tiles, push notifications, and using phone resources. And then we're done for the day. Uh, and then tomorrow, we're going to do a whole bunch of other stuff. Yes. It's going to be great. And we'll be up at dark 30 in the morning yet again. All right, so let's dive into this thing. This is, this is exciting stuff. So we're going to talk about task management. We're going to talk about how to do multitasking with these background agents, how to actually create them in Visual Studio, because it would be useless if you couldn't do that. <laughs> we'll talk about a little touch on some file transfer tasks and, uh, and background notifications. So I, I think this is going to be some exciting stuff. So foreground task. Well, you know, I think it's Andy has clearly pointed out. I mean, that's where apps run right now. They, we, we do one app at a time. Uh, to ensure a great user experience, and, and so that app's running in the foreground and has access to the user, the screen, and interaction. Uh, and at any time, only one's in the foreground. Now we may have a bunch of dormant apps, and we might have uh, cache hits and cache misses happening in the background and tombstoning, where everything goes to Arizona. <laughs> and this is, and again, this is to ensure best performance and battery life. It's all about battery life and performance, you know. And uh, people want their phone to last all day. So. We also have this cool thing called a background agent that can do work. And it's on behalf of a foreground task. So they don't live in a vacuum. You don't just build them by themselves. And you've got a couple of them, a periodic task and a resource intensive task. I bet you can figure out the difference there. Uh, and the key thing is this agent can run whenever, you know, whether the, the app it's paired with is running in the foreground or not. Um, but it can, it's not equivalent to a foreground application running in the background. So it's not touching the UI or doing things like that, like you might expect. Think of it as a Windows NT service. Or that's what we used to call them. Then it became a Windows service, or a daemon, or a daemon, or something like that. Except it doesn't last forever. It's not for long-lived things like building a server product or something like that. So now we have a health warning. So there must be some kind of epidemic or something happening here. <laughs> so stop yeah. what you're doing. Listen to this health warming, warning. <laughs> We're going to restrict the number of uh, agents that are allowed to be going at, at the same time. Again, this is all about battery and user experience. And there are, in the right conditions, you know, if, if the right conditions do not arise, they will not run. So you can't actually guarantee that they're always going to run like you might expect them to. Yeah, no, I, I always think of these, these guys as kind of um, nice sugar frosting. It's kind of a, it's a value add where you can do nice stuff that's... Uh, going to make your users experience better and you can do things like you know well we get you're going to talk about what they're going to do like I'm going to talk all about stuff. that but yeah but you mustn't the key is you mustn't put any uh, critical application logic into right. a background agent because there are a number of ways reasons why it may never run the user could disable agents for your app there's a UI in the settings for that so uh, yeah, yeah it's it's nice value add stuff yeah, it's kind of like going in and disabling an NT service that the admin installed on your PC yes. and you know so it's yeah. like that all right, so agents and tasks. So this task is the scheduling object that you're going to use to register your background agent functionality with the OS, you know, for later execution, you know, running in the background. You know, and again, it's either, you know, it could be a periodic task or resource intensive. So the agent is the code that you write in which the task executes at the appropriate time in the background. You don't control that time so much, so appropriate is relative to what the device believes, the OS believes is appropriate. And again, your application can only have one background agent paired with it. But it could run, we have a way where you can kind of split it in two and run either as a... Well, the key, yeah, the key thing is that um, you can only have one project and yes. you've got some code in it that will be run at some point as a background agent and it could be run in, uh, in both modes. Okay. So periodic tasks, every now and then. That sounds really vague, doesn't it? <laughs> so we'll get a little more specific and say 
maybe every 30 minutes or so, depending on the phone. If, you, if your 30 minutes comes up and it turns out that you're in power save mode, then you might be out of luck, or if you have no wireless or something like that. So this task, they have to complete quickly, so they can't run any longer than about 25 seconds. They've got to get their work done. They also can't just blow out and use tons of memory and RAM on the device, so you've got to keep it under 6 meg. And the device will shut it down after two consecutive crashes, so you need to not be mediocre, as it were. Uh, and, and, and again, these are, there's so many great uses for these things, you know, whether it's location tracking, pulling down background data, like small amounts of data, uploading data. Maybe you're doing logging in your application. You've instrumented your app, and you need to send logging information about the performance of the app or how users actually use the app or things like that or errors, error logs, and send it back to the server so your QA team can analyze those things. So lots of great uses for these periodic tasks. And, of course, tile updates. Resource-intensive tasks. So these need to, uh, you know, more heavy-duty stuff, right? Yeah. When they're powered by the mains, which is another, yeah, another British, a, thing. British thing. It's yeah. loud now. But, you know, <laughs> when I think of the mains, you know, I think of the, I don't know. I don't know why I think of the Starship Enterprise and the, <laughs> the main. We've lost the mains and we're having to go back to impulse power or something like that. <laughs> so um, so if, you're tr if you're plugged in, if you've got 90% charging, you know, or if you've got Wi-Fi, things like that, and you're, you're going to do something really intensive. Uh, now, we still don't want you to go over 6 meg, but, um, you know, and we're still going to kill you after your consec two consecutive crashes. But this is a good time, you know, if you, if you needed to synchronize, download a lot of data, you know, not just the small amounts, you know. And so, uh, you know, a good example of that, it, you know, if you can pop up here for a second, I want to show you a, a <laughs> brand new device we just came out with. Oh my god! Oh my god! Is that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a company in Houston called Compaq, <laughs> and they've created this amazing device. Look at this cutting edge design. Now you can imagine, though, if I'm going to do a resource intensive task, maybe I'll want to use something like this, which is a sleeve that I can slide in here and click in because I need to download a lot of data, and so maybe I'm going to use the you know, an SDIO card like this one here, it's Ethernet, mm -hmm. and then I can just plug it in. So this might be a good example for resource <laughs> intensive. Or you could just use one of these new phones instead. <laughs> so dual purpose agents, so periodic or resource intensive. What is that all about, Andy? That's like where you determine on the fly, kind of? Yeah, so... Yeah, you can only have, well, here's the deal. So when you, you're, you're going to come on to talking about scheduling these guys. So you have one background, one project that can run as a background agent. Uh, you've got code in it. So you've got these two modes where you can run for 10 minutes or you can run for 25 seconds. But your single background agent can be scheduled as both of those. And it, will, it can run as both of those. So when it starts up, you get a, an, ar an args that's passed in, and you can figure out what mode you're being started in. Okay. And then you can just branch to either the, the you know, the ten, the twenty-five second processing right. or the ten minutes do loads of stuff processing. So Perfect. it just means that yeah, you can just have um, a conditional logic in there that can do both. That's great. That's good flexibility. So what kind of things can we do here? Well, we've talked about updating tiles. There's also toast. Uh, the, the shoot across the top there. Uh, we talked about the kind of the location. And we'll, uh, we're going to go a lot more into that later on. Uh, networking, you know, mm -hmm. calling your web services, things like that. Reading and writing files to the, to the ISO st storage. Sockets, just another form of networking. And then, of course, you're restricted, you know, this whole display UI. You're not running a foreground app, really. So, again, if you, in your mind, think of a short-lived NT service, you know, that you're doing that's going to that's gonna communicate with non-UI elements. Or if it does do a UI element like a, a tile, it's because it can do it asynchronously and, and light it up from, from the background. So location tracker. So we have our infamous captain's log thing, and now we have this location log. Um, and so we have a simple location logging, you know, and we, um, you know, our Starfeet command has ad asked us, in mm. this case, to add a location tracking feature to the device. And this thing has to work even when the log application is also running in the foreground. Well, yeah, and the real, the real problem is that, you know, these, these, uh, these starships, they keep being used, you know, going off all places, and they can't keep track of these things. So we, right. need, we need to have a, sort of a little bit of pro software running on there to keep track of these things so you can figure out where your starship is. Oh, well, that's important to know. Mm. 
So I wonder how we might get about doing that. Oh, look at this. As it turns out, there's a template for this. We can, uh, we can create a background agent. Um, and so when you're inside Visual Studio, and you'll just uh, fire it up, you're going to do your scheduled task. And, uh, and then there's the, the code that you'll end up putting in there. You know, um, I remember Rob Miles saying, you know, I know we've been talking about Star Trek a lot, and I, you know, but uh, Star Trek, I, I agree with him, it is a lot like Shakespeare, except with ray guns. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I hope you're out there watching, Rob, because I'm right there with you on this thing. So let's move along. So we have our solution file, and as you can see, we've got our logger application, you know, paired up with that task agent that's going to run in the background. And, you know, you can obviously have all kinds of different, you know, uh, projects inside your solution. Let me back up there one second. I didn't touch on is the, the, the solution assembly file, the whole idea of kind of referring to the, uh, the agent between the two and how they all will be combined into the same zap file yep. and put in there. You know, it's not like they're all over the place. They're, they're clearly tightly bound together. Um, so in the code that schedules the background agent, you know, that you're going to look in a minute, you, you don't explicitly reference a class in the schedule task agent project. But you, uh, you simply schedule a periodic task or resource intensive task. And that way the runtime knows which assembly to use to find the background agent code uh, through but, that reference. But this, this, this trips a lot of people up. Cause yes. You, yeah, because you can create. The linkage is really weird. Yeah, you can create the project and add it to your solution. Um, and there's nothing, normally when you reference something in a class library, uh, if you haven't actually referenced it, you get a compilation error because you're referencing some object that's defined in the other in the other project. And you know, if you haven't added a reference, mm -hmm. the thing with these guys is you don't actually have. There's nothing that's going to turn up at compile time if you've forgotten to do that. It just won't work. Right. So yeah, if your background agent doesn't seem to be running, the first thing I would check is that you've actually remembered to add a reference from your foreground app to the uh, the background agent project. Important stuff. Mm. Or it won't work. All right, so here, let's take a quick little look at this background agent code. It looks very simple. Basically, all the magic happens in the oninvoke area there. And so, uh, and so whatever code it is you want it to do, you just put it in there. Um, and then you've got to call the uh, notify complete, which tells the system, hey, I'm done with this. So let's see an example of some code you could do there. So in this kind of thing, you know, obviously you've got these paired together for a reason. You know, you want to share data between the two of them. And, and luckily, you've got that isolated storage area that can do exactly that. It's the same, exact same isolated storage area is shared by the foreground app as is, is used by your background agent. So, so they can both. I mean, and, and this makes obvious sense because one of the things you probably really want to going to do with a background agent is you're going to go off to a web service and download some data mm -hmm. or something. And then you're going to store it in a file which your foreground application can then use. And you probably update some tiles or something, but it means that when your user starts that foreground application again, they've got fresh data that's already been preloaded and, and right. you get a good user experience, which is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So yeah, I think you're both going to read and write to that same isolated storage to share data uh, between each other. Oh, but wait. But wait. But wait. What if they're both running at the same time? They can both run at the same time. Could yeah. we have a, a concurrency problem? Uh, Potentially, because the background agents are actually scheduled. Scheduled? Yes, scheduled. Scheduled and run by the OS. So it's got a, there's a scheduled um, agent service mm -hmm. to, uh, that is responsible for running these guys. And it, it kind of does things like if, if you've got a number of apps that have all, all have registered agents, you know, it will kind of batch them up and do things efficiently. So the OS is responsible for running it. But essentially what that means is that your background agent is running uh, as a separate process from your foreground app. They could easily be running at the same time. Well, so, not easily, but they could happen. So you really needed to lock that row in the table, yep. as it were. Yeah. And we're going to do that with the mutex. Mutex, named mutexes. Uh, They're your friend. Old school uh, yes. uh, synchronization primitive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But that's how you're going to be ensure that you're the only one accessing, working with a file mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so definitely don't forget to do that, because you never know if they're going to be running at the same time. Background location tracking. So uh, this is this is interesting stuff. You know, uh, the the device. You know, you can do rough tracking. Uh, you know, the agent's going to be running every thirty minutes, and so and so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, ish. As long know. as there's 
battery and, and all the other reasons why it may not, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe not super accurate, but... Um, it's good for a rough fix. It's a good for a rough fix. Yeah. I agree. And so, you know, you can get that, you can get that for free. Now we know there's something better. <laughs> And that's coming yep. later on. We'll talk about the true background, true. continuous background location yes. tracking tomorrow. Yeah. Absolutely. That's going to be the good stuff. So, Toast. Notifications. A Windows Phone, the Toast comes up at the top, and you can see it. And so in the back, in that on invoke, you can create a new up, a new Toast, give it a title, and give it a message, and, and show it. And uh, you can have that pop up every 30 minutes which could be really interesting or annoying or really annoying. something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. And then this is the part here, this is interesting. This is the code in your foreground app yep. that you're writing to kick off and make the background app agent work. Uh, so you explicitly do that um, to, to make that happen. Um, you, you find it and then you have a, an expiration, which I found interesting. Hmm. So they, don't just, they can't just go on forever, I guess. No, no, that's right. You, you've got to set an expiration time on a, um, on a periodic task uh, or a uh, resource-intensive task. And right. the maximum time you can put on it is, what, 20 days? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. 20 days, yeah. And then the user has well, to re... Yeah, the deal here is that the, uh, you've got to put this expiration time on it. So this code here you're looking at will renew the schedule, the schedule. Yes. I, I really don't know which, so don't con which know continent I'm, I'm I on at the moment. You don't anyway. even know how to speak your own tongue anymore, do you? <laughs> I've, forgotten, I've forgotten completely. The wheels have come off. They folks. have. They have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, you, you have to renew this, the, uh, the running of this thing. Every time, basically, every time your user runs the foreground app, you're going to renew the... Uh, the, the, the scheduling of the uh, of the task, the background agent. And what is going on here is that if your user doesn't run the foreground app, then when that 10 or 20 days that you've put on the expiration time expires, then the OS will stop running your background agent. And the thinking here is if the user hasn't run the foreground app, then there's clearly nothing to be gained by the uh, OS continuing to run the background agent, because clearly the user doesn't like this app. True. So why waste resources running its background agent? So that's Absolutely. what the thinking is. So yeah, you need to just renew every time the user runs the foreground app. Absolutely. All right. So let's see how we can debug this. So this is kind of nice, because you don't want to wait for 30 minutes, do you? Well, you could. But it'd you be could. Yeah. You could. So you've got this little conditional yeah. stuff going on here, and there's time span. So when you're debugging, it actually allows you to do something like every 60 seconds where you can pop that up yeah. over and over again. So, yeah, this launch for test method is a special just for, just for development, so you can kick the thing off and not have to wait Excellent. an arbitrary amount. You know, I'd love to see what that's like. Indeed. Well, wow. funnily enough, wow, as it turns we out, can do that. Excellent. All right, so uh, here's the, uh, the location logger that is, um, we're going to run. Uh, let's just run it in the emulator first uh, and the uh, app is simple enough when it loads and it uses that code that we've just been looking at so okay um, here's our foreground app is running and uh, it's uh, it's it prints location logs to the screen and what we're going to do under this start tracking when I hit this button we hit a breakpoint. So this is the code that we're going to look at. This is, this, this is where we are scheduling the agent. So we first of all find if there's one of that name already there, which is null, because we haven't, because that's not surprising, because we haven't run this before. And then we're going to, if, um, if it wasn't null, we were going to remove it and then renew it, so add it again. So this is the renewing, the refreshing code. So we new up a periodic task object, give it a description, and this will turn up in the, uh, the settings on the, in the, uh, on the phone. And then we add it to the scheduled action service. And this is the debug thing. So we're going to say, OK, I want actually just to launch this thing in 60 seconds time. So then we just let it run. And then we wait for 60 seconds. And while we're doing that, actually, let's just show you now in the settings uh, of the, ah. where we can see here applications, background tasks. And it will tell us there, location logger is currently allowed to do background processing. Wow. But you could actually block it. The user can block it. So it's to be debated whether most users would ever find this UI. To they be probably would never find it. No. But they can. This is one way. But if way someone writes a book, 
Uh, yeah. The how to for Windows Phone 8. If they book. did, yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, step by step. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to close this up because then I, what I want is the background agent to put a toast up when it runs. Absolutely. So uh, we're standing by, uh, waiting. Standing for by, toast. wait for the 60 seconds uh, to. Yeah. Uh, I know to, this is the best part of the whole. It is. It deal. is. Yeah. Yeah. This is like. But just think, if we had to wait 30 minutes, how Ooh. difficult that would be to. We would both be just like. Yeah. Out cold. <laughs> Something <laughs> totally, like yeah. that. Yeah. I know this toast is coming any time now. You think so? It's coming out of that little clever toast machine they Surely. have, like at the buffets at the hotel. Surely we've been 30 seconds, 60 seconds by now, haven't we? It seems like it. Yeah, yeah. You know, There's only so much killing time we can do here. That actually seems like 60 minutes now. Mm, yeah. You know, was maybe, this a periodic task, or was this a resource-intensive one? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a non-functioning one, that's what it is. Do you need to hit the turbo button? Uh, something needs to happen, yeah. I'm sure that just as we're about oh, to give up on it. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's what it is. It's yeah. a break point. On invoke. No, yeah, so we're actually into the agent now. Thank goodness. All right. Just in the nick of time. I think it was probably sitting on that break point for the last, you know, no, 59 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, Joac Geocoordinate Watcher. So we're getting, getting some stuff. Now, this doesn't work terribly well in the emulator, so we just substitute a, a string in here to say we're in the emulator. Um, I've got a device here. I could run it in there, but hey, you know, you, get, hey. the, you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'll save the devices for cooler demos. Cooler stuff like tap to connect. And that sort exactly. Of thing. That's what people want to see. Uh, and then we let it run. And there look, it is. we've got a toast. Location we tracker toast. loaded. There's a toast that's popped up at the top there. Excellent. And uh, actually, I think it will carry on doing this for the next hour. It's a good job I turned the sound off like we were doing this last year, and we were trying to carry on with the next session. And yeah, we kept making noise all the time. Oh, I know. That's got to be It's kind of annoying. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's get back at it here then. All right, so what have we just seen? Well, we've clearly seen a background task, finally. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it logged, the, you know, it, it ran even when the other one could be running. Well, we don't really know. Um, but that's what the directions say. Uh, and it loads the information of the phone, added to the log, and, the, and, it, it, and it finally did show us some toast, uh, which, was, which was good news. So tips, tips and tricks, kind of like best practices. So renew often. If you aren't renewed, you die, right? I suppose. Yeah, that's true. But I suppose you could put some logic into your background agent that when it runs, it kind of knows how much time it has to live and realizes it hasn't been. Remember, you only live to age thirty. <laughs> yeah. And then, but it turned out no one was renewed, right? In Logan's run. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah I didn't know what you were, were hoping, talking about. That. <laughs> people are hoping to be renewed, but yeah, mm -hmm. as it turns out, it really was a yeah. sham. So you could start putting ever more increasingly frenzied toast messages up. Yes, like, please, please, run, please run the foreground please. application. <laughs> please, <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other takeaway is we love these background agents, but don't you know? Don't bet the farm on them. You yeah. know, don't put the most critical stuff back there. You know, I, there may be something else we could use to ensure we get critical information down to the device more reliably, and it, maybe that's. Uh, Something we might talk about, like might a push, talk about push, push notifications. notifications. Yeah, yeah, so the key there is if you really have got some critical logic that you want to run outside of the context of the of the foreground app, yeah, the only way you can do that really is to do it on the server. And uh, yeah. use, use notifications, which we'll talk about the session after next, Absolutely. To, uh, to, to communicate back to the, to the device, to the app. So remember, periodic app, 30 minutes or so, resource intensive, connected to the mains. That means your plug on the wall. Um, or hoping that you've got a good charge. Wi-Fi is a good thing. If you're in France, you'll have Wi-Fi. Uh, the audio playback we didn't really touch on, but we I know you touched on that but in the last several sessions of this thing uh, that can go on in the background as well. And, and again, you know, they share information in the same isolated storage folder. Uh, and look how simple it was to make them. So we're done. Good. Great Excellent. Stuff. All right. So, um, that was background processing Yes. Uh, in, in brief. We're going to touch on it a little bit in the next one as well. We're Absolutely. actually going to show how we can update tiles from a background agent. So we're just going to take a five-minute break. Yeah. Ten. Ten. Ten, even. Okay. We're, we're obviously well on, on wow. schedule again at last. See, you find, you find it hard to say schedule, I cannot say you? it. I cannot say it, yeah. See, something's happening. Ah, oh, it's terrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you see shortly. You